Religious history was made in Abu Dhabi last year when the document on human fraternity was signed by Pope Francis and Dr. Ahmed El Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar. It called for tolerance, universal peace, and the reconciliation of all faiths. Embodying this agreement, this year construction will start on a project called the Abrahamic Family House on Sadiat Island. Due for completion in 2022, the site will house a church, a mosque, and a synagogue. Everything new needs time for people to understand it, but actually, this house isn't something new. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to receive Christian delegations in his mosque and receive the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Terrible things that can happen if we do not rise up and speak and live and shine a light in the very hour we need to. You have heard right, brothers and sisters, a One World Religion headquarters to open up soon in 2022 before the end of the year. That's literally just a few months from now. And so the Catholic slash Muslim Interfaithful Council created by Pope Francis and nobody else, well, he's announced that this new Chrislam religion will take place and that it combines a mosque, a church, and also a Jewish synagogue according to a signed covenant. Now, saints, we're a couple of months away, as I said, from experiencing a shift into the future. Whether you believe me or not, you know, the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take over the world, which many, by the way, will be deceived into receiving, but also giving allegiance to except for the true disciples of Jesus and thank God that you're walking right with the Lord. If not, then repent and get right with God before it's too late. Now, commonly that evil Jesuit papacy move has a satanic one world religion namely called Chrislam on the list for soon to be the greatest takeover. What do I mean by this? Well, the whole world will be against the true disciples of Jesus that will see into that deception and that no cost will ever give in. The announcement of the Abrahamic family house, including a synagogue, a Roman Catholic temple, but also a mosque, came in timely, following right after the Middle Eastern Abrahamic Accord we witnessed being signed by none else than Jared Kushner. The Gulf countries, but also Israel, who actually hopped in and was on board with this whole idea. Now, where is it being built? Nowhere else than on Abu Dhabi turf by way of approval of their prince, but also the leading ruler of this Machiavellic plan, which is the fake, self-professing uh, vicar of Christ on earth, Pope Francis. But isn't it strange that, you know, we see this happening? Of course not, because I believe, in my opinion, that the Pope is that false prophet of the book of Revelation and there's a lot of evidences that would seem to actually point so and the Bible tells us about that what that false prophet will be doing that he will be establishing the path for the Antichrist to come and take over and rule over the whole world and for nations to actually also follow him but worse yet give him allegiance you know and so where this nonsense begin in the first place let me tell you, during a trip a few years back, the Pope signed a declaration with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Ahmad Al-Tayyib, and they called for, for, for a religious tolerance in dialogue. Now, so much for religious tolerance when we know that to be a one-sided tolerance. And I mean, this is a no-brainer every time you talk about Jesus, Christians are seen as bigots and the whole world actually rages in anger against them. So I don't think that there's any tolerance with that evil plan. I think that the Christians will be persecuted for taking a stand against the evilness of the enemy. But isn't it interesting that the Lord told us that these times would actually come? And in Psalm 1, it says, Why do the heathens rage against the Lord and His anointed? But he who sits in heaven, enthroned in the heavenly places, he laughs at them. He will laugh at their calamities the day that the Lamb comes back in its wrath because many of these rulers, many of, the, many of these princes and, and kings of the earth, they will seek to hide in the cliffs of the mountains and they won't be able to, to, to escape from the from the, from the wrath of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 
And there's nothing that that rascal Satan alongside his minions could actually do about slowing down the plan and will of God of establishing his dominion on earth. And we take joy in that, don't we, brothers and sisters? Now, they say that it's a fraternity. Isn't it interesting? Fraternity, they say. Isn't that how Freemasonry even started in the first place? As an innocent fraternity, only to turn evil later? There's nothing innocent about a religious brotherhood, brothers and sisters, which the whole world will embrace under Satan's dominion on earth. There's nothing innocent about a bunch of people coming with their inner faithful belief systems and, and going against God. And, and all claiming that, you know, they love each other while Christians remain outside because we don't worship false gods. We don't worship foreign gods. We worship the one and true uh, God of the Bible, Jehovah Most High and His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that Jesus will come and He will dominate. He will rule. He will curse. He will damn all those that have come up with that uh, uh, deception and, and that are plotting evil against him. And so the enemy can try to bark as much as he wants, but the enemy will be destroyed by the breath of Jesus Christ when he cracks that eastern sky open and when he comes with a loud shout of the archangel. Why aren't we surprised of all that which is going on around us? Because Christ warned us. He told us about the signs and wonders that will happen right before His return. And so now is not a time to slack, but rather a time to get right with God, to live holy and righteous, and to walk upright. And if there's sin in your life, you must cast it off. You must deal with it right now because that's the only way that you're going to be making it into the kingdom when Jesus comes back. Now here's the reality. The whore of the book of Revelation, which sits on many waters, which is in my humble opinion, not just the Jesuit pagan papacy system, but worse yet, the Babylonian system as a whole, systemically, right? Uh, well, many actually feed on its evil spirit. And that's why we have roughly anywhere between 20 and 25,000 denominations driving out from that Roman Catholic force. Now, in my opinion, God vilely hates it. He despises it. And that's why the Lord calls us in the Bible to come out from among them. Them who, speaking of the harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, alongside her children, the harlot daughters, all these denominations, all these uh, uh, is, uh, establishments, all these uh, confessions and statements of faith that are unscriptural and go against the very foundation which we find in the Word of God. All these churches that compromise, you know, uh, 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 compromise on the truth because they love to cuddle with their sin. All these churches that invite their, you know, the world into their 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 ministries, into their assemblies, into their worship ministries. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies or refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves therefore thus said the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone hallelujah a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste isaiah 28 15 and 16. you see those are those that have rejected christ but worse yet plot out an evil scheme to bring about the God Lucifer, those on top, the one percent that are seeking to destroy the whole world and bring as many souls uh, as possible down the road of perdition and straight into hellfire. The Lord will vindicate the Christians by dashing them into pieces one day, and they can have their fun for now, brothers and sisters. They can enjoy their plots and their evil schemes, but will come a day they'll be facing the wrath of God. And the Bible tells us that on that day of reckoning, they will be lamenting and mourning but not, not so much for those that would have trusted in Jesus and placed their hope in Him. Jesus tells us that we will be hated for preaching the gospel. In fact, we will be persecuted and many will come against us. They will revile us for righteousness sake. They will seek to destroy us. But He also tells us that we should be counting the cost, even if it meant to lose our heads for the sake of Christ Jesus. And so, if we are called to be martyr one day, there's a great grace there because we're not any better than most of our brothers and sisters uh, through, through history that have actually been killed for their faith because they never gave up on their faith and never gave in to Satan's bait of actually running uh, towards deception. 
And so as through disciples of Christ Jesus, how should we act? The question that begs here is that how are we, uh, how, how are we supposed to respond to all these coming deceptions? Because when we look around us, right, the deception that we see today is nothing compared to, this, uh, to the great deception that will fall in this world. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6, uh, 17, Come out from among them and be separate. Do not touch any unclean thing, and I will welcome you, says the Lord. So this clause, which is come out from among them, is actually a reference to a passage in Isaiah. Friends, come out from the Babylonian system if you haven't already. Don't cope with the world. Don't compromise on the Lord's words of truth. Examine yourself to see whether you're approved in the faith or not, lest you be wretched and poor, naked and stained. We know what Jesus said about spitting uh, out those who are lukewarm since he'd rather you be either cold or hot. If you compromise on the word today, and if you're living off the world rather, and not the word, if you're self-indulging in self, instead of self-denying yourself, then you must pick up your cross and follow Jesus. And what that means is that you must deny self. You must deny your selfish interests. You must deny uh, what, um, what you love. You must deny the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, but also the pride of life. And you must live holy. You must be separate from the world from this Babylonian system, from these deceptions, from coping with the Catholic Church, from coping with some of their practices, for example. And if you're a Roman Catholic advocate, then you must rep repent and turn to Jesus so you be washed free. Now, let me ask you this again. What do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Absolutely nothing. What, foolish, what fellowship can light have with darkness? Absolutely nothing. What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Another name for the devil. Absolutely nothing. What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Strictly nothing, brothers and sisters. Let's carry on. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, you must understand that the world that we live in is a fallen world. It's filled by maggots. There's nothing interesting in it. Everything is crumbling down. Nothing will remain but the Word of God. The Word of the Lord, the Bible says, is settled in heaven forever and ever, which means that you can trust the Word of God. You cannot trust the corrupt man of our government. You cannot trust those that are on top trying to wage war against your life and don't care about your soul. Now is the time you need to turn from wickedness. Now is the time you need to turn away from a practical life of sin. If that, is, if that is the case and you still indulge in sin, now is the time you must actually lay everything down at Jesus' feet and say, Lord, take, repent from your sin and you will find mercy in the sight of God. Otherwise, you'll be cast away into a great judgment, into hell fire. Well, you will stay there forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, I am calling you to come back home. Repent and understand that there is a great day of judgment and now is not the time to play Christians. Now is the time to get right with God. Be ye cleansed. Lament and mourn if you have to. Cleanse your hands, O sinner. Repent unto God and the Lord will receive you gladly into His house. I pray that this message edified you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Take care.